Hi, it's Allison Clark, and welcome to another edition of Cowbells and Conversations, Ideas That Ring. Today, I have an expert on writing, and this person is someone who has really helped me in my career over the last 10 years be more effective in how I'm writing, but also getting me to think differently about what I'm actually putting out there to the public. So please help me welcome my friend, Erin Donnelly. Woo! Hi, thanks for having me, Allison. Yeah. So Erin, I met you years ago and immediately was drawn to how you think. We started working together. You've helped me with pretty much any writing I've ever done from my Tuesday tips to my training manuals. And my bigger project was the Kindness Habit, my book. So you have helped me so much in my career, be more professional, be more credible. And can you introduce yourself and just let the audience know what you do? And then we're going to be talking about a couple of things that everyone can do. And then also perhaps some tools on writing books, but also what are some useful activities to do right now? Yeah, I am a ghostwriter, which is just such a mysterious title. Most people don't understand or know what we do. And um, actually, ghostwriting is, is a hugely collaborative process. Mm-hmm. People think, oh, you wrote that book for someone? It's like, no, I practically moved in with them for seven months and we collaboratively <laughs> wrote this. Um, it's really, uh, you know, it's interesting because most people don't realize that 60 to 80 percent of all nonfiction books are written by ghostwriters mm-hmm. or written with ghostwriters, mm-hmm. I should say. Yeah, I was shocked when you told me that, but it makes sense. It really does. And that's in the traditional publishing world. Um, you know, publishing companies have ghostwriters, agents have ghostwriters. Mm-hmm. They look for people who have big social media followings or big followings on the whole. Mm-hmm. And then they have that person work with a ghostwriter. And it's really a lovely experience because what it does is it retains your voice it clarifies your message mm-hmm. and it gives you an expert quality book. Mm-hmm. And so now that everyone's self-publishing, this has become even more important because you can self-publish anything, you know, in any kind of, in any form of quality. And so right. to stand out in the self-publishing world, you need to work with a team and at least one major uh, expert to, to, to really put something out that's going to make a splash. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember when I joined the National Speakers Association, they told us to focus on what you're really good at. So what is your strength? And then hire people to help you with those other areas of your business that is really not your biggest strength. And I've always remembered that because I'm really good at training people and coaching people on how to communicate effectively. But writing was never one of my strengths. So what I loved about working with you is that I have the ideas, I will write the concepts, and then you bring it back to me in, a, in the way that I wanted it to be. So it's like you pull out information from people in a way that we haven't thought about. And it was such a, a gift to me to have you work like that. So a lot of people, you know, everyone says like, oh, I should write a book one day. And, you know, we heard the phrase, everyone has a book, you know, in them that we could write. But most people, you know, probably will never take the time to actually write a book, but there are so many people out there that have contacted me and I know you as far as like, I want to write a book. So let's start with the people who will actually write a book. What advice would you give them about starting this process? You know, before a word even gets written, there is so much work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, I think that, you know, what you were just saying that, you know, you have strengths are known to you and yet you know that you need some help in the writing world. Mm -hmm. Well, I would even take that a step further to say that, you know, I'm a good writer, but yet when I wrote my own book, I needed tons of help. I had four Mm. different editors. I had three proofreaders. Mm. I needed my handheld because we're all way too close to our, to our stories, Mm -hmm. to our knowledge, to our jargon, to see it objectively. Mm -hmm. And so bringing in a ghostwriter or even an editor, which I do, or book coaching, which I also do, um, just helps you to cut through the habitual language that you're using to pinpoint the stories that are going to actually matter most to the reader. Um, So, okay, in terms of how to prepare to write a book, gosh, it's such a big 
in conversation. And I invite um, your, your uh, viewers to go to my website. I have a guide, a prepare to write your book guide. Mm. But I'll go through just a couple of the quick stuff with that, Allison, is that, you know, first of all, this is the superficial stuff, is to just agree to self-publish for your first mm. book. If you want to do traditional publishing, you need to find an agent, you need to find a publisher. They have control over your title, over your cover, even if some of your information. Mm -hmm. It could take at least a year and a half to two years for your book to come out. Mm -hmm. So I always encourage people, just agree to self-publish for this first book because you get complete control of yes. the final product. Secondly, agree to write a short book. Most self-helpy, memoir, leadership kind of books are about 50 to 75,000 words. Mm -hmm. And yet readers usually read about a third of that. Mm -hmm. So when I work with my uh, authors, uh, we agree to write a book that's about anywhere from 20 to 30,000 word count. Okay. And this is like, you know, your book, The Kindness Habit, mm -hmm. I want to say that was about 20,000 word count. Mm -hmm. And the reason we, you know, the reason I love this size is that, well, first of all, it makes it easier on you as the author. Mm -hmm. You get to choose your very best material, your very best stories. Mm -hmm. I have this philosophy that every word has to earn its place on the page. Mm -hmm. Because more than anything, I want to, I want to honor the time of the reader and only give them the best material. Mm -hmm. And so many books are just repetitive and fluff and story after mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. So you get to, so write something short. If it's mm -hmm. only 25,000 word count, it's so much easier to tackle. For and the sure. best part about the short book is this, is that when people can breeze through your book in, a, in two, three hours, you know, they call these are airplane reads because mm -hmm. they can be read across the country. Right. You can, you know, breeze through your book they will go online and talk about it. Mm -hmm. They will send it to other people. So it's a great marketing trick to write a short book. Um, mm -hmm. I've just been amazed at how many testimonials I've been able to get because people feel a sense of accomplishment. Oh yeah. Well, yep. and so many people don't even read books today. You know, so when you said they read a third of the book, that's even impressive. You know? Yeah. I, mean, and you know what? I was just gonna say to keep it, I was gonna say keep it short because you're right. So many people don't read and when they do read, they want something that's realistic that, that they can actually read and retain. Yes. Yeah. And when it comes to nonfiction books, I love the idea of having a series. You know, if you've mm -hmm. got 75,000 words in you, have a series of three books. That that's would be great. awesome. Yep. And so, so those are just two things that I think um, will, like, lighten the pressure or the mm -hmm. load. Good. A bit. But your guide really walks people through as far as, like, how to set it up. As far as an outline or what's your guide, what do they, when they get your guide, what does it give them? Yeah, so we talk a little bit about the size of the book and um, publishing, but of course that, uh, you know, we talk about how to choose your topic mm -hmm. and okay. um, that's a big thing right there. And, you know, sure. I want to just spend a little time there if we can, because yeah. we are in this delicate time in our, in the world of what's mm -hmm. happening with the virus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people do write um, nonfiction books are industry experts. I mean, you're in touch with tons of speakers. Almost all of you need a book mm -hmm. that somehow relates to the work that you're hired to do. And so while I think that that's a great idea and that's, you know, what most people do, I think that the urgency of this time and like we're getting to sort of like sense the mortality and, you know, in the air and um, a lot of us are grasping for meaning and wanting to find purpose mm -hmm. in what uh, in, in what we can even make of this time. Mm -hmm. So I invite people to get way more gutsy in choosing your topic. Mm -hmm. You know, what is this thing that is just burning inside of you? Um, you know, we're really coming together as a so society here. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think like, maybe this is a good time to talk about addiction, to talk about depression, mm -hmm. to talk about suicide or environmental issues. Like, we're seeing how we come together as people. So this might be a really good time to talk about passion projects. Mm -hmm. one, of the one of the questions I use is um, I ask people, for what do you have zero tolerance? Mm. You know, what is too painful for you to be around? Yep. And you know, that might be like a difficult question instead of, oh, what inspires you? But like, you know, if I were to ask you that, you would say something about, you know, I. I can't even take it when people don't slow down and appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. Well, especially right now with all the grocery store workers working so hard, 
My friends and clients in the industry are working 15 hour days. And I've heard horror stories about pe how people treat them in the stores. So like when I'm in the stores now, I make a point to make eye contact, thank them for being there and putting themselves at risk with the virus. So you're right, like simple appreciation is totally my hot button when people are not appreciated. Yeah. Yes. It's everything for you. And you could have written a book about, you know, how to present in front of an audience or, you know, how to build a speaking business, mm -hmm. but you wrote The Kindness Habit. Mm -hmm. And it still relates to your work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So I really invite people to kind of peel the onion on their topic a little bit and find like, you know, what's most meaningful to yep. them. You know, I've written for a 92 year old woman who, you know, like she just at first said, well, I just want to have my life story in print. But by the time we were done, she said, no, this is for young women to read, mm. to see how far we've come as women. Mm. You know, and I'm just like, yes, you know, yes. I, I wrote with a guy who had just got out of prison last year for a Ponzi-like scheme and he wanted to tell his story when we were done that book was about economic privilege and how it scrambles people's brains to screw up their values and priorities and you know so like you always get to like this heart of what this is what really about I mean, yes. you know, most people only write one book why not make it something brave and compelling and a little bit you know earth shattering oh yeah well, and, and this period during the whole, you know, focusing on the simple things of life, you know, now that most of us are in our homes and we're working from homes, we, I've seen so many people just to start to have aha moments. And I think it's a great time for people to think about what is mm -hmm. important. How are you starting to see the world differently? I started writing on my whiteboard just all the positives that have come out of this. So I'm an, you know, an entrepreneur. I've never had a solid paycheck. So I'm in a position, it's like my whole business I'm recreating, but there's so many positives. So I know you and I have talked about the power of writing because um, a lot of people are journaling, you know, what they're grateful for now, which I know has really helped people. So if someone wasn't going to write a book, but they could really focus on, you know, what they're passionate about, some ahas that they're having right now, what's a yeah. writing exercise that you would suggest? Or I know that you personally have, you know, journaled before. So what could you tell people that might be, something helpful that we all could do right now to get us thinking, you know, how are we going to live differently? What have we noticed? Yes. So if you, okay, so let's start here. If you have no idea what you want to write about, mm -hmm. but you want to write a book someday, get yourself, you know, a folder, just get yourself a folder, start, yep. you know, write on it, my book. And then every social media post that's compelling to you, mm -hmm. print it off. Start collecting quotes that you love, memes that you love, articles. Start making a list of who are your mentors, who are your teachers, what is inspiring to you, um, who you would love to interview. Just start collecting as if you were a journalist. Mm -hmm. oh, I like that. Yeah, like what do I do with this? And just allow yourself not to have any direction with it. Like for instance, you know, my next book, I want to write something about writing books, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure what. So, you know, like here's my folder. And I mean, you can see just all these like random sheets of little paper, like look at this, you know? Right. I mean, and so then what I did, you know, a few months ago is I just laid it all out in front of me and I started looking for the themes. Mm. Oh, this is about, you know, prep preparing to write your book. Oh, mm -hmm. this is about getting stuck. Oh, this is about publishing. And then I was able to find the categories. Mm, I love that. Like, okay, well, who else do I want to talk to? So like a lot of people are telling me that they're having a hard time writing during this time, like really focusing on the writing. Mm -hmm. And, and I just like, just accept that. Take a step back because usually when you're having trouble writing, you don't have enough information on your topic yet. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm using this time to, um, like I have the sort of the meat of the book I want to write next, mm -hmm. but I want to talk to different people. So, mm -hmm. you know, I talked to um, an Iranian man this week about his experience in writing a book. I mm -hmm. talked to a Latina woman. Mm -hmm. I talked to a black woman who's in charge of diversity, equity, and inclusion, just to mm -hmm. find out like, what's going on with writing your book? What are mm -hmm. your challenges? You know, what are yep. your hopes? Mm -hmm. And um, and so even just like getting out of, um, you know, the same mentality yep. and the crowd of people that we normally talk to. Right. And this is a great time to do it because most of us have a little bit more free time right now, whether mm -hmm. it's the commute time that we used to have driving to work, maybe we're not flying as much. 
Um, although some people don't have as much time because they're actually homeschooling their children now. So it kind yes. of depends on people. But I've also found that I'm connecting with people at a different level now because we're in this space where turning on Zoom and connecting with people has been a great breakthrough. I mean, I've used it for years, but I'm connecting with people that I haven't for a long time. So I think this might be a great time to reach out to people, you know, and do some of that research while they might have a little bit more time than they've had before. So I love the idea of keeping a folder of your ideas, you know, writing down who are you drawn to, especially during this time. I yeah. think a lot of people <clears throat> are showing their true colors as far as how are you rebounding? You know, how are you keeping yourself strong? And there's a lot of days that I know it's hard for, for me, for everyone, you know, there's some days you're like, oh my gosh, it's super overwhelming. But who are you, you know, who are you really following? Who are you reading about? And this is a great time to capture those ideas. So that is definitely yes. a cowbell idea. But we want to make sure that when, if and when you want to write a book, you know, how can they find it on your, what's your website called? As far Erin as Donnelly com. Okay. It's, yeah. E-R-I-N-D-O-N-L-E-Y. There's a prepare to write your book guide. I also offer free half hour conversations on Book Talk Tuesdays. So you can schedule a time with that. me. What? But Allison, before we leave, I want to say one more thing, because for those of us who do know what we want to write about, and we have those interviews lined up, record them. Oh, Get yes. Them transcribed. That's what I do as a ghostwriter. Everything is recorded. Everything yes. is transcribed. So you have exact words. You start to I learn your own vernacular. Yes. And put it in your folder. Yeah. And just remember that writing books is not a solo sport. This no. idea sequestering into a cabin to finish your book in, you know, a week is ridiculous. Oh. Include experts. Don't yes. get your mother or your partner to give you the feedback. No. Take it yes. to an expert. I beg of you. <laughs> Please. No, really, it's true. Like, know your strengths and find people. Surround yourself with people who make you better. That's in life. I mean, that's with your friends. That's at work as leaders. We all need to reach out to people, all, all of us as experts, you know, find people like you for writing. But in your life, find people who can help you elevate you, you know, to the next level. Yes, take this project seriously. Your children are going to hold it in their hands. This is, you know, what you're going to leave behind. Yep. So give it the utmost care. And I've so appreciated, you know, the fact that you've done that since day one. So mm -hmm. well, thank, thank you. you again for everything you've done for me. Like, you make me look so much better because you are so good with words. You're amazing. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining. And again, we will put Aaron's link at the bottom of this so you can reach out and get some resources. So if you want to start your book now, don't wait, just start today. Yeah.